This is another key race that we're watching. Susan Wilde, the incumbent there, right now with 9% in. She's crushing it, but you know, this is the early vote. Ryan McKenzie is a rising star state representative there in Pennsylvania. Um, and then look, we've got a few results coming on in Michigan. Let's take a look at Washtenaw County. Of we're going to take a step away from national coverage right now and go to the Republican watch party as uh, the governor elect Mike Braun is speaking. Let's go to that live right now and listen in. These are a really good looking crowd. Will you get in a picture with us? Thank you. What a journey this has been. I think it was up at the Moontown Brewery that we celebrated. And the journey that I've been on over the last seven years, most people would think you'd been crazy to do it in the first place. Dear, what do you think about that? No, it's good. Okay. All I can tell you is seven years ago in August, when I declared to run for the U.S. Senate, there weren't many believers. And even folks close to you wondered, did you really have a game plan? Well, my game plan started very simply when I got to be the luckiest man alive to marry this lady here. Now you do all these fancy commercials and they don't even talk about you, they talk about my wife. We were lucky, I think, going way back when we made the decision, unlike most did then, to move back to our hometown. And when we did that, that set the stage for everything else that followed. Most people didn't think that made sense either. But had we not done that, I'm almost certain we wouldn't be here this evening. Yeah. When you marry someone that says the priority is to have my own business and raise a family, how in the hell could you argue with that? <laughs> so we came back and did just that. We lived the American dream, blessed with four kids, three of them running the business I ran for 37 years, and a family that's always been behind me and Maureen in anything that we did. That truly is what life is about. And so often, you get caught in the groove where you don't want to get out of it because that's success measured in one way. To me, once you do it, I think you need to look beyond that. And that's what I decided to do seven years ago. So there, that was a tricky navigation when you didn't really have any real experience at it. As I've always said, politics and government are a lot easier than running a business. Any of you that own businesses, Woo! yeah. Woo! Hell, in government, you just got to be smart enough not, to not spend more than you take in. In business, you're signing the note. Your livelihood is on the line. And by the way, there are dozens of competitors in a real market that want to take a bite out of your flank. That is difficult. 
Now the difference is when you jump into the political arena, business is over a span of time. Two hard deadlines in politics, May and November. And then you need to take all the skills that you've learned in the real world to where you've been understated, underestimated, and you've overperformed. And then it's like shooting ducks on a pond. <laughs> because it's so assumed that you got to come from that pathway. I never did assume that. When you go to the U.S. Senate and you get a crew mostly of Hoosiers that come out there with you, you end up being the most successful freshman Senate office. That's something to be proud of. And yeah. And then in issues that really count, like health care, education, agriculture, you get more done than the senators out there. You got to wheel out of there after three decades. <laughs> do you think I believe in term limits? Yes, I do. Everybody can campaigns on it, and then they have amnesia once they get there. And let's throw in a balanced budget amendment to boot. As hard as it was to get there, it begs the question, why would you give it up? Wasn't going to do it more than two terms anyway. And when I saw the fork in the road, to burn another six years there when the numbers, the fact that they're borrowing now a trillion dollars every six months, and it was annually just six years ago, the interest on the debts as much as what we spend on defense, we need to shock that place into reality. And when you're an entrepreneur by trade, you generally, if you survive, know how to pick the best fork in the road. And there are many of them. And to me, if it was coming back to lead our state where you can set the agenda, where you're going to get along with a legislature, imagine what you can do with that. So we can be guaranteed that we're going to maintain great cash flow. That's a chip shot. I had to do that for 37 years. But then what are you going to do to make Indiana a place to where our kids and our grandkids want to move back to? For the 60 or 70 <laughs> rural counties that we have that are flat or losing population. I can guarantee you, I know our state has four corners. I come from one of them, and I'm going to make sure that all of us as Hoosiers prosper. I'm going to do it with everything I've learned in the real world, the tutorial of three years being a state rep, six years in the big house, and we're going to take Indiana to places we've never seen before. Okay, and that was live coverage from the Republican Watch Party. Their governor-elect, Mike Braun, speaking with 55% of the vote, the Republican. What do you think, Bob? Well, I mean, he said a lot of things that were interesting to me. He talked about how running a business is harder than working in government, and he also talked about how that experience is going to help him to run Indiana in a better way. And he talked about he'd been out there for six years, and he saw the fork in the road, wanted to take that fork back to Indiana from Washington. He didn't say very many nice things about Washington. He wanted to come back here and set the agenda and be able to get a lot of things done. And so, I mean, I think that's a, that's a good message for him to have tonight. Uh, some more results coming in. Attorney General now called Todd Rokita, the Republican there, 
It's like with 60% of the vote over Destiny Wells, 40% of the vote now called, Bob. Yeah, well, that's yeah. a little more of a margin than I think a lot of people thought there would be. Uh, but Rakita is a well-known name. He's a Republican in a bright red state, and I guess it's not really that surprising. You know, what is surprising, State House District 62, Thomas Horrocks with 63 percent, the Democrat over incumbent Republican Dave Hall, 37 percent. We'll mention, though, 33 precincts reporting, but that's a surprise, isn't it? It is a surprise. Now, Monroe County's, part of Monroe County is in, but part of it is not. I mean, the the today's votes are not in yet, but the, the early votes, Hor Horrocks, Horrocks was well ahead of Dave Hall and uh, those early votes by like maybe 4,000 votes. So uh, that's a good deal of, I think, that margin. But it's I think that'll tighten up. And in State House District 60, another interesting race there where Peggy Mayfield, the Republican incumbent, with just 25 percent of the vote over Michelle Higgs as 75 percent. Well, that's a shocker. If that's if that's <laughs> if that holds up, that'll be a shocker. But I don't think Johnson County votes in are in yet. I think a lot of the Morgan County votes are in, which is a very Republican county. Um, and I know in Monroe County. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's get to those really quick. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. We have. Uh, I was going to say that mm -hmm. Peggy Mayfield will probably lose in Monroe County, but it's not a very big part of that vote. Mm -hmm. uh, in Monroe County, some votes are in. Uh, looks like Jody Madeira is well ahead in that race for county commissioner in the race for county council in Monroe County, where there is a write in candidate uh, as of the the early and early votes and uh, mail-in votes, the write-in candidate didn't have any. And so the other people are going to, they're going to win. Yeah, you're still seeing 0% precincts because it's just the early votes that they're right. counting right now. There's 30,000, I think, right? 30,000. More than 30,000, right, yeah. Right. All right, well, we're going to go back to PBS and uh, national news hour coverage right now. We'll be back with local throughout the night. Thanks for watching.